Well, right now I'm joined from the Syrian capital by freelance journalist Lizzie Fellon to get an update on this attack. Lizzie, tell us what has happened. Yes, well, actually, I was meant to be on the delegation of journalists traveling to Homs myself. Um, so it is pure coincidence that I'm here speaking to you uh, right now. Um, so the, the delegation of journalists um, were, came under fire by uh, a shell. And the French journalist, along with another Belgian journalist, stepped out of the, the car to, see, to take footage of the wreckage. And at that moment, they were then hit uh, by another shell. This is according to uh, first-hand accounts of what happened. And, and the second attack killed the French journalist, uh, Gilles Jacquier, uh, and seriously wounded another Belgian journalist who is now reported to be in the hospital in Homs. Um, eight other civilians are also reported to have been killed and approximately a, a further 11 people uh, wounded. Now, this is being uh, received by the Syrian authorities here who gave permission for the journalists to make the visit uh, to Homs uh, as an attempt by armed groups in the country to sabotage a day where, um, as your report showed, uh, hundreds, uh, if perhaps hundreds of thousands of people came out to rally in support of the government. Um, and indeed, the the president came out and spoke about the importance of the people at the same time uh, taking part in the reform process but also combating uh, terrorism. So it's been seen very much as uh, an attempt by these uh, armed opposition uh, individuals inside the country to portray a scene of uh, chaos to the outside world because as we know um, the since uh, NATO or the, the West lost their vote in the United Nations um, because of the veto of Russia and China. It appears that they, there has um, uh, been a, a different tax employed uh, by the, the West. Uh, and we have, of course, had reports that they have been supporting armed uh, opposition groups with the help of countries like Qatar and Turkey. Indeed, uh, just a few days ago, there was a report on uh, the British Special Forces website uh, saying that they believed that uh, British Special Forces were giving uh, logistics and uh, financial and training support to armed opposition groups inside Syria um, um, by training them in places like Libya, for example. Um, so really, this is uh, uh, very worrying that uh, uh, to, to see uh, journalists who are coming to try to they, the journalists come to try to report freely and they, they obviously cannot do so with their safety being guaranteed because of these uh, armed groups inside the country. There was an interesting uh, poll that was made, uh, Lizzie Phelan, making a comparison between the support for President Bashar al-Assad before the unrest began and then one after. And this was done by a Qatar Foundation along with YouGov, which at this point says that the support for President Assad has actually grown ever since uh, news surfaced uh, and confirmed in many respects, but mostly, of course, the government being vocal that armed terrorists and gangs are responsible for what has occurred. Uh, and now the support for Assad to have grown. Is that how you see it? Is that a confirmation of uh, how you have witnessed uh, uh, the Syrians and, of course, the support uh, for the government there? And, of course, your views on the and reflections on this uh, recent poll. Yes, well, I've been here in uh, Syria for a few days now, and uh, over the past couple of days, of course, Assad made another speech yesterday at the university, um, and today, again, I was at the demonstration today where he unexpectedly uh, made the surprise speech and came and joined the people where he said he very much wanted to be amongst the people, and I witnessed a, an outpouring of support for the president, um, and of course, the United Nations has said that 5,000 people have been uh, killed uh, during this conflict, but they have been unable to confirm those, uh, those reports. And of course, we know that there, there has been evidence of a very high number of people from the security forces and the military who have also been killed. And in fact, um, we, we, since I have been here, I have spoken to a number of people from different areas like Idlib and Homs and Hama and other areas who say that far from them being in fear of the army, that because of the threat of these arms group groups, they actually would prefer to see a greater army and security presence uh, in order to restore uh, the stability to such areas. And if you could tell us, uh, based on some of the encounters that you've had or information in general, what do Syrians uh, think of other countries? In particular, we could talk about Qatar, maybe, or even uh, the U.S. 
and other countries like Turkey, perhaps, in terms of uh, their roles regarding Syria? Yes, well, the countries that you named uh, today, um, as, as a foreigner, a lot of uh, Syrian people approached me to express their outrage at the role that countries like Qatar, Turkey, um, uh, and others have played, of course, the United States, uh, in supporting the opposition inside the country. And there is a lot of evidence to show that they have done so. And in contrast, countries like uh, Russia, for example, which has played a much more neutral role, um, are, uh, they, they are being received with a lot of gratitude uh, by the Syrian people. And um, at the protest today, we saw a number of uh, Iranian flags, uh, Hezbollah flags, and Palestine flags uh, as a great expression of solidarity amongst the people towards th those nations for supporting them uh, in this time when uh, they, are, they, they perceive that uh, the, the, the West um, and Israel uh, and Qatar and, and a number of Arab countries are working very hard to create chaos in their country. And finally, and, uh, of course, there is also a lot of anger towards um, um, Qatar in particular because of the coverage actually of Al Jazeera, with people, many people accusing Al Jazeera of fabricating um, reports um, of violence by the army against the Syrian people. Well, since you're mentioning Al Jazeera, in general, it seems like the media outlets, even as the president said, about 60 of them are ramping up uh, these uh, events. But it seems, and please tell us if that's your interpretation also, that it's, they're trying to make uh, uh, what the government says and put their words against their words, meaning uh, we're telling you this is happening, but the government is saying that anything that happens, for example, this incident that, uh, well, you brushed uh, death, it seems like, by not being on this uh, uh, bus that uh, occurred with uh, one uh, reporter being dead, that they're turning around and saying, well, it's the government that's staging this. Do you get that feeling? Yes, well, there, there is uh, very much a, a, apparently a complete lack of objectivity. Of course, we see very little coverage of the pro-Assad demonstrations uh, in the Western and, uh, and, and uh, 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 much of the Arab uh, press. Um, Whereas, of course, that, that it's not to say that there, there are not problems inside the country and that there is not a, um, opposition or a desire for change or reform in the country, which, of course, the government is, uh, it has in the last two speeches by the president indicated that they are very enthusiastic to address those, those demands. But in uh, the, the press like Al Jazeera um, and BBC, or the, the Western press, for example, there is very much a desire just to push the, the, the narrative to portray a picture that the, the vast majority of Syri Syrian people want regime change, when in fact, from, from my experience and the, the, the evidence from a, num another, a number of other reports uh, indicate that that is very much not the case and that there is very much a divergence of opinions in the country. And as you said, uh, other polls have indicated actually a large proportion of support for the government. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Freelance journalist Lizzie Fellon from Damascus. We appreciate it.